So modern web development requires a number of services for the application to work, and this app is no different. So we're going to be in this video setting up all of the different services and API keys needed for this application to work. So you will have to create a number of different accounts, but all of them should be in the free tier. So this shouldn't cost you anything. To get started and sort of how this course is going to work is that um, there's a code repository where you're going to clone the main branch and that will just contain the initial commit. And then I'm going to have another one called course where I sort of add one commit for each video. So cloning this onto your computer, I've already done that here. You're going to want to do a yarn install. And once that's done, open it up in your favorite uh, code editor. And the first thing you'll notice and that we want to focus on is this dot end dot example. So this won't contain your actual secrets because this one's being committed and it's just for you to basically copy and paste. And we're going to be pasting this into a new file called .env.local. And this is a file that won't be committed. It's in the git ignore um, down here. And this one's picked up automatically by Next.js to, to load your different secrets and keys and whatnot for use locally. When we deploy this later to Vercel, we're going to have to copy these keys over to that environment, but this will help us get up and running locally. And the first one we're going to set up is the Mapbox token. So this one I think is pretty self-explanatory. It's the one that powers this map here. So if we pop over to Mapbox, create an account, we're going to go and then create a token. And we're gonna give it a name, we'll call this the house course, and you can keep everything else the same. You would probably want to restrict this token to specific URLs um, if this were a real application. So you can put in your URL for your app here. Um, but we're just going to say create token. We have to enter our password. And this will take us back to the dashboard where we can copy and paste that new key. So we'll paste that in. Number one, done. The next one is Firebase. So Firebase is actually used for two things in this app. The first is that we have Firebase authentication and we also have Google Places. The ability to search both here and on the form where we're adding a new house. Um, and with Google Places, you actually need a few different APIs enabled. You need the geolocation one to convert an address such as Toronto into coordinates. Um, so we're gonna go through and set all of that up now. So on the Firebase console, we're going to click on add new project and we'll call this the house course. And it's going to want us to use Google Analytics. We can just say no, thank you. And then we'll create this. So this is going to take a minute. It's going to set up our project and then we'll continue. With the project set up, we can click continue and that should take us into the dashboard. And the first thing we're going to do is enable authentication. So you're going to click on authentication and then click get started. And so Firebase authentication supports a number of different methods of authentication, Google Connect, Facebook Connect, Twitter, GitHub, etc. We're just going to be sticking with the good old email and password in this course. So you want to enable that. Uh, we're not going to enable the passwordless sign in. So we'll just click save. So that's enabled. And then clicking on this little uh, gear into project settings, we can start to get some of the information we need. So the first one that we need is the web API key. So copy and paste that, come on over and paste this in. Skip the alt domain for two seconds and go to the project ID. So project ID is this one here. So we're gonna paste this in. And the auth domain is just the project ID dot firebase app dot com. So you can just type that in. Now we're down to the client email and private key. So for that, we'll click over to service accounts and we're going to want to generate a new private key. So it's going to download a JSON file and we need to open that up and sort of view the contents of it. So you can do this any way you want. I'm going to drag it over to VS Code just so I can look at it here. Make that full. So we need this private key and we're just going to copy everything within these quotes from private key all the way down to the last slash n. So we'll come here, paste this 
in. I guess you could do the client email as well first, and that's just the one below. So it's this one here. Paste this in. And that's uh, setting up the keys, but we're not done because we need to enable a few different APIs. So I'm going to go over to the console.developers.google.com. I'll include all of these links so you don't have to memorize them. And here we're going to enable some APIs for this project. So we're going to find the project house course with this ID here, make sure it matches. And then we're going to want to go into library and we need to enable three different services. So the first one we need is the places API. So we'll just enable that. And when that is done, let's go. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, that one looks good. So let's go back to all the APIs. I find the Google console the most confusing thing in the world. So the next one we need is the Maps JavaScript API. We're going to enable that as well. And when that's set up, we need to enable one last thing and that's geocoding. So we need to get back to library, find geocoding, and enable this. So you will need to enable billing on your account. You should be in the free tier so it won't cost you anything, but Google wants to have that enabled before it allows you to use this stuff. So that's set up Firebase and Google, and the next thing we're going to do is move over to Cloudinary. So Cloudinary is what are we host all of our images, and it does all of the dynamic resizing of the images. So say this house here, we click in and it has a bigger version. It's actually serving up different images and it's generating them dynamically. It's a really cool service and they have a very generous free tier. So the couple things we need are the Cloudinary secret. So that would be this one here. So we'll just copy that to the clipboard. And then we need the Cloudinary key. So that would be this one that's visible here. And we need the Cloudinary cloud name. So that's just the, the name of the account here. In this case, it's Lee Halliday. And one thing I should point out, notice that some of them begin with next public underscore, some of them don't. So the ones that don't, those are backend only. So they'll never be built into the web pack. They're not meant to be exposed publicly at all. The ones with next public are the ones that are built into web pack and those will be uh, exposed to your users. So that's why like this one, we don't want to expose because it's secret. These ones we actually do need um, to, to be able to do the dynamic resizing and whatnot. So that's why they're like that. So the last service we need to set up for now is a database. You don't have to use Heroku when you're developing. If you have something like the, the Postgres app installed, feel free to use that. Um, it's totally up to you, but I thought Postgres gives you a free Postgres database that you can just use for development and whatnot. So might as well take advantage of that. So we're going to create a new app. We'll call this the house course. And then we're going to go into overview and we're going to add a database. So we're just going to search for Heroku Postgres. We're going to um, provision the free one. And with that set up, we're going to go into settings, reveal config vars, and that gives us this connection string here. So we're going to want to copy that and paste this into database URL. So if you had a different database, Postgres database elsewhere, all you need is this connection string here and it point to wherever you have Postgres and you're good to go there. The last thing that we don't actually need any keys for, but if you wanna just go ahead and set it up, you probably already have one if you're doing Next.js development, but we need a Vercel account and you're gonna to wanna to connect that to your GitHub because later on we're going to be deploying this application so that we have a publicly available URL like this. And this is sort of the finished product hosted, everything set up that we're covering in this course. So that's it for this video. 
There's not really too much coding. It was just a lot of setting up different keys, but this will get us in a good place to keep going with this application.